Yeah, it's been a busy eight days. Just learning so much every day. <laughs> and the end goal, obviously, in terms of time, is getting closer. Power squats, hopefully to like 180 kilos, hopefully. A lot of guys are getting more in shape. They're actually filling out what they're supposed to, like the linemen actually look like linemen. Feel strong as hell. I can move mountains. I would say football is the ultimate sport because you've got people that are as fast as sprinters and as strong as weightlifters and as flexible as gymnasts. <laughs> From a speed dynamic standpoint, like Lewis does things that are extremely difficult that he makes look natural. So I was talking to Kevin, a strength and conditioning coach. He saw Harry lifting next to us. And he pointed over to Harry and he said, that's a kicker. Like what's going on here? All 6'6", 230 pounds of Harry Malander. Yeah, they're, they're freaks in the best way. That's, that's a term of endearment in this business. On Monday this week, I spoke to them about performance and results. And so what we do with them is we say to them, you want to get curious about the recipe. How well you train, how well you sleep, how well you recover. It's all the little things put together will make one big thing happen. Practice doesn't make perfect. You know what practice does? It makes permanent. It has got to be perfect. This is a game of inches, so coaches spend so much time finding where the holes are, where they can get better. If you're lagging behind, you're being lazy, not being consistent, they see that as well. Yeah, come on. Woo! Good job, lads. First day, one day. Yeah, that's, like a, that's like a great week. Big week ahead. Wednesday, obviously, is match day with the combine. Friday, indoors again. And then Saturday. We didn't ask for enough of yeah, yeah. Just yeah. one word. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's going. Work on three. One, two, three. Work. Work. <laughs> hey, hey, look, we're learning. Yeah. Week five, fifth week. Mock pro day week. So we have 15 athletes here five of which are specialists, and they're prepping for the specialist showcase, which is at the back end of the combine, which is in Indianapolis. They're gonna be going there and kicking and punting in front of representatives from the 32 NFL clubs, and that's coming up next week. It's a very high pressure environment that we're going into. Our first chance to be seen by NFL scouts, so it's as big of an opportunity as anyone could ask for in sports. The pro day is where the rest of the players, the other 10 are gonna be going, and that's at University of South Florida on March 20th. That is a showcase for them to show their athletic traits, measurables. They'll also do position drills and they'll demonstrate themselves in front of teams. Testing so a range from a 40 yard dash to bench pressing 225 as many times as possible to a bunch of agility drills as well. Um, and then we're gonna go into skill specific sort of training and basically we just hone in on the components that best suit our position and we'll just work hard towards executing it. They're getting their chance, their audition for the NFL, and if they show up and show off in that combine, then there's gonna be personnel, NFL personnel to go, whoa, look at that guy, wow, look at that guy. They might just grab a guy there, look, can we have a 15 minute, 20 minute talk with you? If you see some things in your playbook that you don't quite understand, please ask us. It's obviously learning the game is one thing, but to speak in NFL terms and, and NFL language is a, is a whole different thing. There's so many, different nuances and ways of thinking and numbers and terms and all sorts that, that go into football. And we're trying to impress upon them that you've got to know this, you've got to see this, you've got to be able to speak this way when a coach asks you a question. And the crazy, crazy thing about football language is each team has their own language and you've got to learn that language and you got to learn it quick. So we know if I'm retracing, all right, that's the cone. Soon as he say I played 15 years, six years in New York for the Jets, seven years for the Atlanta Falcons, and two years for Arizona Cardinals. Get your body used to pop. Get your body used to pop. Very encouraging. I'm seeing the guys that pretty much come here with no knowledge of the game and just picking up on our sport so quick. Uh, these guys are definitely athletic. These guys are definitely uh, motivated. John should be in the Hall of Fame. So <laughs> you look at his numbers, it speaks for itself. Um, it's not lost on us how valuable it is to have John around. I think all of the coaches and the staff here were ready to do something big with this group and they wanted to be a part of this because they recognise it as something big. It's very hard not to be inspired by the people that are in our room. 
Was lucky enough to hook on with the Atlanta Falcons. Spent six really good years there. I played a decade in the NFL uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Atlanta Falcons. And then I played uh, five years with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Anyone know the average NFL grid? Two and a half, three, right? Five years, that's so hard to do. He did it, he's there, he's right there. He's here for 10 weeks. So we have Roy, who is our linebacker's defensive line coach. Roy played nine years in the NFL as a linebacker. He's supported by Dom. He's one of those guys who really broke into the game at a point where international guys weren't finding their way into the US. The offensive line room is led by Coach Paul Dunn. Dunny coached in the NFL for a very long time with a number of teams. Coach George Maialata, Isaac Alacon, supported in that room by Ashley. Ashley was a student assistant at the University of Wisconsin. Also spent time as a Bill Walsh fellow with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tennessee Titans. We have Ben Koyak, who's our tight ends coach, played in the NFL for five years, really made a name for himself out of run blocking, physical player. Steve coached in the NFL for a number of years, was an incredible background of information, but also he brings incredible energy to our camp. Our kicking and punting coach this year is Ty Gleader. He's a detail oriented, perfectionist when it comes to the kicking and punting game and he's exactly the kind of person we need to teach these guys how their kicking ability can translate from one sport to this sport. Um, physically and mentally the coaches are quite like on top I wouldn't say on top of you but they're quite determined for you to get the best out of you. They're always there to sort of give you a helping hand talk to you about their their past their experience. Like we don't at all I don't want to be here for regrets I care about this I grew up in when they went back to like this I grew up with a normal London boy, you want to play football. I grew up with heroes, Andy Cole, I was a United fan as a kid, Andy Cole, Dwight York. Played football for a little bit, but it wasn't for me. Found American football and it probably saved my life, if I'm honest. Didn't, didn't grow up in the best of areas, things left and right, but football kind of helped me focus a lot. To be able to learn this sport as a foreigner, it takes so much time. So you have to be selfish with other parts of your life. You have to reduce certain relationships. We don't have the luxury to relax because I know what it takes because I had to play that role. I had to accept that reality. Like, no, what may be okay for some guys is not gonna be okay for our life and the life that we chose. Like, not at this position, not playing at this high of a level. Like, not if you want to be successful and sustain your career. You know why I take this serious? Because this is the difference between you getting a job and you going back to Australia. Pay attention! Do your job! Working this job is, means a lot to me. It really means a lot to me. I want to see, I want to buy all these guys' jerseys one day. I want to be able to sit down with my children and just be like, yeah, I remember when my man couldn't do that. And now, look, look at him. He's just, he's winning in life. That's my motivation. It's good, man. I want to see these guys grow. Become, they're becoming men in front of us. To be in a situation like this, when the sand at the bottom of my hourglass is more <laughs> prevalent, uh, I can't tell you how I look forward every year to this program and having the opportunity to work with these young men. I am extremely passionate about it. I absolutely love it. It's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. It's really purposeful for me, and my journey, I think, perfectly places me to be the one to try and help guys down this journey. This is something I always believed that I could have done. So to see other people being able to do it, I'm more than happy to give Lyndon help in hands. So it's that constant opportunity to grow as a person and to help others grow that really draw me to this sport. Um, I'm so blessed and grateful that God gave me a passion in my heart that has to do with coaching football because I really couldn't see myself doing anything else. We're losing Ashley this week, sadly, but at the same time really happy and proud of her. She's moving on to a role coaching at Bucknell University, coaching Division One football. She's been amazing to have for our guys. She's really taught them the game from the ground up. I know that they're going to be really sad to see her go, but as sad as we are to be losing her, we're also acknowledging that this is a great opportunity for her and we're glad that the IPP has been a part of her story. You're one more legend of the game, and today's that legend of the game is Coach Ash. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
it's not an easy thing to teach someone the game at this level who's never played it before. Not every coach can do that. There are coaches who have coached in the NFL who won't be able to do that. And Ash can, and she was a huge asset for us. She needs to go do her thing, man. She's amazing. But um, the relationship with Ash was was something which we're going to miss massively. And um, really, I really appreciate the time she spent it. So. Um. Beach. Just your rowdy group tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, this will probably always be like the, one of the coolest things I've ever done in my entire life. Um, like I was telling Tom today, he was just like, "What's one thing um, that you want the guys to remember?" And it's um, don't let anybody tell you no, based on how you look or where you come from or your circumstances because there's going to be a lot of people especially in this business that any chance they get to tell you no or to tear you down or kind of you over you're going to take that chance um so you just kind of you set the tone for your own life just remember that okay yeah. that's the biggest thing so. <laughs> um okay three claps and a rip flare, right yeah. You're asking or telling? <laughs> 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 Alright, on the ready. Ready. Woo! So Mock Pro Day is tomorrow. We've been working hard towards it. It's It's been something which is going to really show how much we've actually been working the last few weeks compared to when we first arrived. Mock Pro Day is our opportunity to just give the guys a flavor of what the real thing is going to look like. But the idea with Mock Pro Day is for them to practice regulating those emotions that they're going to have on the day, the nerves, the ups and the downs. Feeling pumped. Yeah, I'm ready. Feeling ready. So we're basically treating it as our real Pro Day, which is the 20th of March. Do all the testings. 40 yard, the bench press, the three cone, 5 and then for me and Praise and the tight ends will be running routes and the O-line, D-line will be doing their, their different skill set. So we're all looking forward to it and I think um, it's going to be a great experience tomorrow. Yeah, today's the day, Mock Pro Day. We're all going to take a bus over to a high school pretty close by just to get a feel of on the actual Pro Day, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be getting a bus together to the combine event. So focus in. No messing about. He's grown since last night. So we'll go there, we'll do the full gambit of uh, what we call dry measurables, height, weight, hand, arm, wingspan. I've shrunk. I've shrunk. <laughs> I've shrunk. And then it's like, okay, they'll measure here, here. And it's like, well, no, you need to go like this. You need to show that you have, this is the measurement they're taking. Yeah, right, yeah, you guys miss. When each position group were doing their bits, everyone was getting behind each other and um, I think that's the, the strength of this program, the strength of the group. <laughs> 40 yard dash left to go and then get into some position drills. Uh, we work our movement drills, things that they may see, things that the scouts may want to see. Being able to show that they can play multiple positions and play fast and play with effort. After the mock pro day in the morning, we took the kickers out for their mock combine. And for me, that was 15 punts and five kickoffs, and then a load of holds for the field goal kickers. Focus on clean contact here, but don't be free down whoever goes today because the most important one's next. Yeah. is in the 3rd of March, 4th of March, right? 16 field goals, all off live reps, going from probably 25 yards back to 55, 60 yards. In this wind as well, fair play to them. Well done, that was our first full job, combine experience. Uh, kick is on three. Two, three, kick it! Oh, he forgot how to Fuck, count. Like, down. Cameraman, cameraman. Down. That was... <laughs> in fairness, <laughs> one's always the hardest. That's a meltdown. <laughs> so in our meeting earlier this week, I showed the group some texts, some emails, some messages that I've been receiving from clubs asking about them. Sometimes they were very blunt questions asking about specific individuals. Sometimes they were just, hey, who are your top guys? Who's there? Reason why I put this up, it's because we're not waiting one week for some of us, or four weeks for the rest of us to be evaluated. You were evaluated the day you got here. Because when I get asked these questions, I have an obligation to tell them one thing, and that's the truth. 
they need to do their work, they're scouts, they need background info, so they'll ask, right, any character concerns we should be aware about, aware of, is there, um, does anyone struggle being on time for things? Does anyone struggle with the schedule that you've given them? Is there anyone that stood out from your perspective? So it was important for me to re-emphasize that sense of urgency with the players so that they understand, right, this isn't a game, this is now, you know? There's, there's no sense of, right, I'm gonna give it a few weeks and, and I'll get ready then, and, and by that time, when that time comes, I'll be ready. Um, the time is now. And if you're waiting for something to happen or someone to come in, or a particular day or a moment or a second to be inspired, it won't happen, it won't come, I promise you. I do wanna do some catch-ups tonight with you guys. Yeah, I'm excited. It's a nervous excitement because um, exactly the emotion you, be. you are built for this. Yeah. But you you are built for this. One hundred. So yeah. They start becoming teams that you're a fan of, and they start becoming potential employers. Yeah, that's a real like yeah. shift in mindset. Yeah. That's, well, I can play, yeah. and I was like, well, I could play PP, I could play Gano, I could play wing, I could play punt return, kickoff return, wide right receiver. Uh, like that's exactly the right answer. Yeah, it's not like now I'm here. Yeah. I'm like. But this is for me, do you know what I mean? No, no, not for anyone else. So. This is the point in the camp where people are kind of coming up together, then people start doing this, and that gap gets wider and wider, and this guy's going up and up and up, and this guy's start stuttering. Like, this right now, week five, that's when that starts to happen. So you can either be this guy, or you can be this guy. I'm better. Yeah. I'm better. Uh, better because I feel like I'm getting better at doing everything. Yeah. Good. Definitely hit home and sort of sets the fire of it. I, I need to work harder, I need to recover harder. Leave no regrets, you know, leave, leave no regrets. The biggest thing that I've learned this week is that everything that I need to do and everything that I say I am, it is within me. It makes me look even more forward to the actual product. If you really want to be the guy that changes the trajectory of your family's life and your life, then do that and be that person every day. This is all we have now. These next four weeks are, are it. If, if we do what we're supposed to do, I think everyone has a shot and we can achieve what we're all here for. You know, it's, it's on us to, to make things happen now. The time is now, it's now or never for these guys.